Hello, welcome to Uncle Cthulhu Reviews. I'm your host, Uncle Cthulhu. So, I'm back with miniatures. Uh, that's primarily what my channel's been about. And over the last sort of month, I've been a bit busy, a bit distracted, been playing sort of card games and board games. But I'm back with miniatures, where what I love. Uh, so, yeah, so... This is the start of me talking about miniatures. What I thought I'd do is actually a bit of a roundup of what's happening in the war game world, certainly the war game world, which I'm interested in. My own personal hobby, uh, I finished off my Chinder army. I actually not quite finished off, got some uh, tufts to do on the bases. I have been doing a Slanesh army for Age of Sigma. There's some being some beautiful new models from Games Workshop released. Um, Fiends and a lovely Herald, which is turned uh, a willing victim into a harp that they're playing and uh, I've been wanting to get my uh, black powder armies out well my Napoleonic armies used for black powder out because this year is going to be the great game replayed and I'm a, a French commander so I'd like to get into the guts of black powder and understand it better so that when we play the game I know what I'm doing, I know the best way to take the farmhouses I need to take. I'm a French commander on the far right of the French army, so basically I'm advancing and uh, attacking Papillard's farm, and then I'm going to have to hold it against the Prussians, so that should be really cool. So, other things, what's happening in the war games world has caught my attention. So, Futsal War Banner are releasing a new Gangs of Rome starter set, which looks great. It's called Bread and Circuses. And it's uh, a battle for our granary in Rome, and who controlled the bread was uh, not a granary, a bakery uh, in Rome. And who controlled the bread were really important about buying the uh, support of the people. Now, this starter set is going to be £50 as opposed to the £35 the previous one was. And to be honest, that was great value. And I, I'd consider I would have paid £50 for it. But this new one is especially good because the extra money has gone into providing three mob bases for the game. And for me, Gangs of Rome comes into its own because of the mobs. That's what stood out for me as the game mechanic which made me want to play Gangs of Rome. And I'm really pleased that uh, Footsaw has been able to put, uh, War Banner Footsaw, been able to put those mobs into it. Uh, mobs aren't controlled by anyone representing the denizens of Rome. Uh, you can slip into mobs, slip out of mobs, and uh, get pushed into mobs and mobs will attack you. So I'm really delighted that that set's coming out. Uh, I think it's pre-orders are on now and it's released in March, so I'll definitely get my hands on that. Uh, Glasgow is going to get a war game show, so the guys in G3 have arranged a war game show. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go to it this year. It basically comes on the weekend before I go on holiday, so I'll be at work. I work most weekends. and uh, It's an interesting time because it's the end of June. And Scotland's got a uh, cannonade, which is a uh, second week in May generally. It's got um, Claymore in Edinburgh, which is the first week in August. So it's quite interesting that we, we sat in between sort of the May and August one and Kiddy Muir, which is a bit late, and Angus, which is a bit later on in the year. So yeah, I'll, if I'm around in Glasgow during that time, um, eventually I hope to get there and hope it's a success and I hope it continues but for me Cannonade is always going to be my big war game show in Scotland it's one I save up for I'm uh, starting to build a few funds now for for the one this year because May's, May's my birthday and I generally take a couple of weeks off so I make sure I'm always off around Cannonade it's a really good show so Battlefront uh, Battlefront have announced well they announced last November during the centenary uh, ending of World War One, that the their Great War miniatures uh, game will be getting an update in March. So I'm, I'm lo looking forward to that. I've got you've probably seen my videos. I've got French, German, and trench systems. I've never actually played uh, a game with it. I plan to. I've got one of my pals has got an army for it as well. And I've never played it because the battlefront rules have looked fairly impenetrable. The rule book's massive. Um, and actually the playthroughs and stuff it all, all, all looks uh, pretty straightforward and I mean I've, I've read it, I understand it but uh, it just seems to be a lot of stuff on and the, the later sort of um, uh, Flames of War latest uh, volume, is it volume 4 um, and all the other rules seem to be stripped down and a bit more simplified so 
yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be looking at that. And uh, new models. Certainly, Belgium Army has uh, been announced. Cavalry has been announced. And actually, Battlefront sculpts some really beautiful 15 mil. Possibly the, the best 15 mil models I've seen. So I've already mentioned it this year. Got the great game we played in Edinburgh. Uh, Edinburgh, Glasgow. Oh, God. How could I get the East Coast and West Coast mixed up? Uh, yeah, my hometown as well. Um, the great game we played in Glasgow this year. As I said before, I'm a member of that. That's looking really good. I've got um, a few guys I know taking part as well. So it's going to be a great social uh, activity as well. It's going to be a great spectacle. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Um, War Games Illustrated magazine this year. They're doing 12 months with our cover mount and the cover mount's basically from Warlord Games so the first two were Cruel Seas Sprues the last one was uh, Desert War Sprues so it was Africa Corps, the New Commonwealth or the 8th Army Sprue the next one's been announced as some of the French Cavalry Sprues so I think that's really interesting one of the things I'd love to see would be the magazine talking about how you can use that maybe patent guides etc uh, being a bit more explicit with it, but uh, certainly I have a subscription to War Games Illustrated, so it's it's uh, free plastic for me. And uh, which takes us finally to talk about Waller Games. So there's a few things in the pipelines. So they're actually doing a range reduction at the moment. So I suspect this is uh, metal ranges that's going to be superseded or has been superseded by plastics. Certainly, so um, US paratrooper metals, for example, there's a US paratrooper plastic box. So, I suppose it makes economic sense for a company to think why produce two. Um, one of the other things is the lancers, British lancers from the Crimean War. Obviously, they're doing a black powder Crimean War supplement this year. So, why have the metal range when you're going to have a plastic range coming out? So, that'll be interesting. Look at so see where that goes with warlock games metals and plastics in my opinion wargaming uh, serve two different niches plastics you're going to get a whole load of similar poses to throw it together to put on the table and build regiments quickly whereas metal i think have a character all to itself and, and get some real detail and and the sculptor can really do some interesting stuff with metal that they can't necessarily do with multi-part plastics and yeah you know as a, as the person assembling the plastics you put your arms on a certain way looks etc you have a bit of control how that model looks but yeah sometimes there's just a, a certain um charm with a with really nice metal pores and uh yeah it's, it's interesting to see where that will end up for warlord um certainly they've innovated with their plastics now there's a couple of other cool interesting things coming out for wallow so their hungarian war uh, world war ii supplements coming out the final uh, hitler's final throw of the the uh, panzers to try and save the hungarian oil fields looks quite interesting so that's going to be out soon the miniature that you get through the book etc has been released uh, revealed and finally, uh, one of the things that really caught my attention for Warlord on their website was, uh, Facebook page actually, was some pictures of playtest what looks to be a Napoleonic warship game. And it was Paul Sawyer, John Stollard and Gabriel, who used to work for Games Workshop. I don't know if he still does or not. Um, he was certainly in the Warhammer historical Trafalgar supplement and he's got real passion for Napoleonic warships. I love Napoleonic warships. I have a couple of fleets myself. And uh, I've quite liked Cruel Cruel Seas. Um, I love I love kind of boats, and so I picked up Cruel Seas, but it hasn't set my world on fire. Not in the same way that I think a Napoleonic warship game would. Especially imagine how good it would be to have plastic sprues with uh, uh, men at, um, tall ships. It'd be awesome. So that's what's happening in my in war games world at the moment i mean there's tons of other stuff happening like kickstart i'm still waiting my joan of Arc kickstarter and uh mythic games have been showing off some of the unboxing of the uh, final products and what that looked like i don't think that's due till may i've got two weeks off in may so it's uh, it'd be good to um get that and paint that up 
uh, but they're going to do that too wave and stuff but um yeah so that's that's uh what's grabbed my attention in the wargaming world at the moment let us know what's grabbed your attention you have a great day wherever you are whenever you are and uh yeah let us know what you're doing uh, stick it up in your uh, in the comments uh like you say i love chatting wargaming that's why i do these uh blogs and videos uh, if you like what you're saying subscribe let us know you've liked it um i love feedback on what i do as well so if you want me to do things differently um yeah let us know so anyway you have a great one i'll catch you again bye for now